Hi, Dr. Hagmeyer here today, and I've been getting lots of questions about PCOS and just the symptoms of elevated androgens, or what we call male hormones, in a woman, what they do in a woman's body. So in today's video, uh, I wanted to share the 10 most common problems that I see in practice that often accompany women who have PCOS or have just too much male hormones in their body and how to recognize them. Uh, many women that I work with, uh, you know, have hormonal imbalances, and many of them come to our, our office after being on compounded hormones where they have been given some sort of testosterone, some sort of estrogen, and now they're being overdosed, and, and life is just miserable for them, okay? So if PCOS is new to you, uh, real briefly, PCOS stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome, and it is by far one of the most common endocrine disorders along with estrogen dominance seen in reproductive age women. And the most common symptoms include heavy uterine bleeding and infertility due to a lack of ovulation, okay? But again, like I said earlier, this is just the start. Uh, in today's video, I'm gonna, you're gonna quickly learn the 10 signs that are associated with just having too much male hormones in your body. So you might be wondering what causes PCOS? Well, PCOS at its very root is a hormonal imbalance. But what many people often and so quickly tend to lean towards it and think about and really only test for is testosterone. And if that's the only hormone your doctor looks at and your testosterone levels are normal, they're gonna miss many of the other hormones that are androgenic. And those are gonna be things like insulin, DHEA, androstenedione, dione, dihydrotestosterone, and then things like progesterone and cortisol, which can get converted into those male androgenic hormones. Now, in past articles that I've written on my, on my website and even other videos that I've, I've uh, created, I've referenced how an underlying autoimmune thyroid disorder can really be a part of this whole equation. So for many women that I've worked with over the years, many of them have found little to no improvement uh, if all the doctor really did was prescribe metformin. And while obesity and infertility are really the more common symptoms that, that most doctors focus in on with their patients, what you need to understand is that if you're a woman and you have PCOS, you're at great risk for a lot of other different diseases. In my last video on PCOS, I talked about the connection between insulin resistance and autoimmune thyroid um, and how they're connected. And I also reviewed some of the things that you would see on your blood work. And so the reason I tell you this is if you haven't already seen it, I would really encourage you to go back and watch that video. So this way you can pull out your blood work if you suspect that you have PCOS and then you can start looking at them. But again, uh, and today I just wanted to, to focus on the 10 major signs associated with this androgen excess, okay? Number one is acne. If I see a woman that has a lot of acne, okay, immediately I begin to think PCOS, and I immediately begin to think she has a lot of elevated levels of androgens, okay? Number two is aggression, okay? Do you find yourself just being short with your spouse, short with your boyfriend? Do you find uh, people that you work with you know, that you're just snapping at? Do you feel like you're constantly on edge Okay, Elevated levels of testosterone, interestingly enough, in studies have shown that as little as 0.5 milligrams um, in women that are not only uh, uh, premenopause but also postmenopause, 0.5 milligrams was enough to, to create uh, a state of, of irritability and anger with women that had a no previous history of, of those kind of symptoms. Okay, So again, irritability is a big one. Number three is alopecia. Okay, Now there is nothing worse for a woman emotionally uh, than really to just lose her hair. And when women start to lose their hair with, with, with obviously good reason and good concern, they should be alarmed. Uh, but what many women don't realize is that it may not only be a thyroid problem, that alopecia and hair loss can also be uh, related to these hormones like DHT, dihydrotestosterone, or DHEA, okay? Or even androstenedione. dione. And so she'll begin to lose hair. And this is called androgenic alopecia. And unfortunately, if you're a woman who's been given testosterone and you start to notice that you're starting to lose hair, your hair may never grow back. And so this is why I'm so cautious to prescribe any type of, of androgenic hormones to a woman just because she's low in those hormones, okay? You have to really look at the big picture. Number four is cancer risk. And I will tell you that this is a, a increasingly a concern that, that is becoming more, more obvious, but elevated levels of insulin and androgens, specifically androstenedione and testosterone, uh, is associated with endometrial cancer. And it's associated with endometrial cancer in both not only pre 
menopausal women, but also postmenopausal women. So something to be concerned about. Number five is called hirsutism. Okay, too much male hormone in a woman's body, it'll begin to cause excessive hair growth, especially on the chin, uh, maybe on the arms. Okay, so again, if I see that, I immediately begin to suspect PCOS. I begin to suspect hers um, I begin to suspect excess androgens. Number six is hyperlipidemia. Okay, big fancy word uh, means high cholesterol levels. Okay, women with excess androgens have higher amounts of cholesterol. It's that simple. Very, very common finding that we see. Um, specifically on blood work, we'll see high triglycerides. We'll see high cholesterol levels. We'll see an increase in those LDLs, uh, those so-called bad cholesterol. They're not really bad, but that's a whole nother topic. And then they'll also see decreased HDLs. So again, something to look at on your, on your blood work. Number seven is low progesterone. Okay, this is another hormonal imbalance that really often accompanies high androgens and often explains infertility and miscarriages that often occur. So again, you wanna be on the lookout for those low progesterone. Number eight is hypertension. Listen, one in eight women die nowadays from a fatal heart attack. Androgen excess in women results in increased risk for hypertension, increased heart disease. And when you combine those statistics with women, and so many women have, have basically unmanaged thyroid conditions or don't even know that they have a thyroid condition, those numbers jump to as high as one in three. So again, something to, to really, really you know, be cautious about when it comes to hormonal imbalances. Now, another problem that I see with excess androgens in women brings us to, to number nine, and that's hypothyroidism. Though this doesn't occur in every single case, um, but just last week alone, you know, we had three women come to our office. All three had PCOS, all three had insulin resistance. And when we ran some antibody levels, antibody tests for Hashimoto's, all three came back. So again, this is not something that you just want to dismiss, okay? Even if your thyroid levels are in the so-called normal range, okay? Um, number 10 is inflammation. Uh, as we're seeing in research, more and more disease processes really have roots that are steeped in inflammation and elevated androgens are no exception. So if you have a lot of joint pain, if you're uh, constantly having like a lot of brain fog, uh, a lot of, of, of stomach issues, this could be due to systemic inflammation, allergies, asthma, um, you know, breathing issues, sleeping problems. Again, we mentioned the joint pain. Those are again, those would be signs of inflammation. Now, um, a couple takeaway points, you know, as you can see, you know, there are, there are many different causes to this and uh, identifying what these, these elevated male hormones uh, are becomes increasingly important. And, and one of the best ways to do this and really find out more about this is through a salivary hormone panel. You really don't want to spend a whole lot of time evaluating these hormones in blood. They're just unreliable, okay? So what you need to understand here is that there are many different underlying metabolic imbalances uh, that when corrected is really the key to restoring optimal health and really quality of life. And so that's my first takeaway in this video. Number two, uh, find a doctor who's really going to do more than reach into his lab coat and, and really just whip out a prescription for you for the newest medication. That's really not going to get you better. Find someone who's experienced and, and who's willing to sit down with you and spend time with you working with you from a dietary perspective, working with you on nutrition uh, and, and lifestyle management, okay? So that, that's really critical. Number three, understand that PCOS is a complex condition. It has many different factors, many underlying causes that medications will never ever correct, okay? Number four, there is special testing that you're gonna need because certain hormones, like I said earlier, are best tested through saliva rather than blood. Well, I'm Dr. Hagmeyer. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you're searching for a doctor who, who will really look at these connections or you want more information about our office, uh, there's a form on, on this page that you can fill out for a free phone consultation. And that's a great opportunity for us to find out if there's a whole lot more that can be done for you and how we might be able to help you. I'm Dr. Hagmeyer, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. And please share it with those friends and family members who you feel this will be just extremely helpful too. Take care.